So hello everyone, my name is Vijay and our team is Vignesh, Jagdish, Jayati and Professor Srinath. And our topic is simulation of traffic scenarios using Sumo. So let's set the stage a bit and let's look at the traffic in India. So you can see the famous, or rather infamous Silk Road Junction during the day and night filled with traffic. Four Indian cities make it to the top 25 congested cities in the world. And the city we're focusing on, Bangalore or Bengaluru is 10th. So the fact is India is a very much developing country and the amount of motor vehicles and the travel demand is constantly increasing and it's only going to rise. So we need traffic control and control system measures to help regulate this and help make the traffic or the system much better for all. So we're going to look at the self-adaptive control system and also some metrics which, which you can see how useful certain things are. So this is the specific portion of Bangalore that we are focusing on. It's e-city or electronic city, and it is the technology hub in Bangalore. So this uh, uh, pink color road you can see here is the nine kilometer long flyover, which is also a national highway. And one more thing that since this is a very much industrialized area, uh, there's a lot of traffic coming in at around 9 a.m. and going back at around 6 p.m. So we have the morning and the evening peaks. So the governing body, LCTA, has done a lot of interventions and a lot of things on this network to see if they can fix it. And we will be evaluating some of them here. And also our college is somewhere here. You can come anytime. So this is the adaptive traffic lights, which we have seen. Uh, this is something that we think that can help revolutionize the system in our electronic city. And these have already been deployed in Europe and Singapore, US everywhere. And the market is only expected to increase. So here's the agenda for today. We're going to simulate traffic in our network. We're going to measure traffic specific metrics like waiting time emissions and other things and perform interventions. So we will get into what exactly we mean by interventions here. And then we will reevaluate these metrics to see if these interventions had a positive or negative impact. So these are the three scenarios we had. So we had low, moderate and high traffic with increasing number of cars in the scenario. And we ran it for one hour roughly. So in some more time one hour. So there are three basic metrics that we have here, stress detection, emission visualization, and speed camera placement. So let's go into each of them in more detail and see what they mean. So the stress function is a linear combination of five parameters, the halting number, which essentially shows the number of vehicles that are either stopped or moving at less than 0.1 meters a second, the CO2 emissions of all of the edges in that junction, and the step occupancy or the proportion of the edge occupied by a vehicle, the queue length or the average length of all the vehicles at that edge and the last time step. So we have buses which are longer than cars and so on. And also the waiting time, the sum of the waiting times for all vehicles on the edge. We then add a parameter to each of them. So the Ws, then we normalize them. And finally, we get the stress function S. Next, we have emission analysis, where we compute the different types of pollutants like CO2, CO, nitrous oxide, and so on at each junction, at each time step. And then we aggregate the data, and then we calculate the most polluted junctions. And we then visualize that in various different ways, which we will see. Next, we look at speed camera placements, which looks at the points with the most number of speed violations on the map. And we also have a metric which determines the closest proximity of two particular speed cameras on an edge. And this can help the authorities make realistic decisions, for example, putting speed bumps at that location or speed detectors and so on. So let's have a look at the metrics in action. So we start off with the emission detection module. You can see at every 100 time steps, we plot the junctions on the map, which has the highest total sum of pollutants. And these would change, as you can see, as the network progresses. And this is in the high traffic scenario. The previous one is in moderate traffic. And you can see the position of these junctions also change. Next, we also have the stress analysis. The aforementioned stress function comes into play. And we can define our own parameters for this. So you can see that here also we have five junctions. And of course, we can also change the number of junctions used to plot and a lot of these stress parameters if you want to give more weightage to, let's say, Q length, or if you want to give more weightage to the CO2 emissions, we can do that. And we'll get different plots. And this is for the high traffic. And now we have speed camera placement. And the first one is with moderate traffic with a very small radius of bounding box. So you can see a lot of these things bunched together at this junction in moderate traffic. And in high traffic, uh, this is after a few time steps, you can see the vast spread of these speed cameras. And our metrics also give summary plots and also summary uh, locations for these stress junctions and so on. 
So let's see where these can be used. So first you can make realistic decisions. For example, if we have real data, we can simulate it using this data. And even if we don't, this can serve as a kind of um, early warning or any kind of thing which we can uh, give to the authorities for them to try out certain things. Or if there are certain choke points, this can help find out those choke points without experienced telemetrists or other such things. We can also recommend precise locations in the road network for certain things, for example, speed detectors or speed breakers, like I just mentioned. And more importantly, we can use this as an underlying layer for research. So we have a few metrics and we have a few interventions. So we can see if we make our own new intervention, you can try to run these metrics on it and see how it changes. So that is the crux of our presentation of our uh, code as an underlying layer, which is why we've also open sourced it. So this is what an intervention is. So we have metrics, like I said, we have speed camera placement or stress or the total number of um, emissions or pollutants or any kind of metric like that. We can change the state by performing an intervention. And this gives us a new state with which we run our metrics on. And this gives new values of which we can derive insights. For example, if it has been beneficial for the network or if the network's fairness has increased and so on. So these are some simple interventions. So we have um, an XML parser library which can change the XML of the generated by Sumo and we can change the simulation like so. We can also try remote control of the traffic phase like adaptive schemes or adding speed breakers or micro mobility solutions, which we will also come into in the future. So this is a library. We are firm believer of open source, which is why we open sourced our work. So you can scan the QR code or you can just download it through PyPy, uh, the Python package installer and all the documentation is in the library. And here are some simple interventions that we can try changing the lane priority or the number of lanes of a particular lane type toggling one ways for a group of lanes or changing the allowed vehicle types or changing the start time of a particular vehicle on a route. So this is the main intervention that we have done. So as you can see here, each traffic light here corresponds to a traffic light at the network. So we run it um, for all kinds of traffic scenarios and we get a list of the stressed junctions which correspond to a traffic light. Then we aggregate it over the whole duration. And we, in our thing, have found out the first or the top five most stress junctions, which are these red dots over here. Now, there is a case to be made about making every single traffic light adaptive, which is certainly possible in theory. Uh, but the fact is, changing something in the network is more than just numbers or more than just cars. It's also a monetary aspect. And it's not very much feasible for all traffic lights to be made adaptive, especially right now, because the industry is just starting, at least in Electronic City. So we have gone with the baseline number of five traffic lights to be made adaptive. The more, the merrier. If you make more traffic lights, we would get better results. So what exactly do I mean by results? Well, let's see. So here is the mean travel time of the cars or of the vehicles. So the blue thing means after the intervention of making the said five traffic lights adaptive, and the red lines are before. So we can see in the low and moderate, we do get an improvement or an um, optimized improvement over here, but the difference is a lot more pronounced in the high traffic scenario, which can mean a world of difference for those regular commuters coming in at 9 a.m. and going out at 6 p.m. We also have a similar trend for waiting time. So we can see that after intervention, we have our less waiting times in media, in moderate, high, and in low traffic. And this is, again, a very good improvement for those who are regular commuters and also those who are using the highway. Remember this electronic city highway and electronic city itself is a bridge between two states in our country. And for people coming from outer state and going outside, this would also mean a lot of difference for them. We also have the network stress over time. So like I mentioned earlier, the stress is the sum total of the weighted parameters. And this gives us a total number, for example, 0 0.175, 0 0.25 and so on. And you can see that the stress has overall decreased in the after intervention in low, moderate, and high. Although there are some discrepancies, for example, at some particular time step, it's more in the before intervention and so on. The amortized waiting time or the amortized stress rather in this case is a lot less. So this is something which also these graphs can also change based on how you want to look at stress. So for example, how you value certain parameters over others. We took a more of an equitable distribution of the five parameters. And even in that, you can see that there is a lot of improvement here. Let's now look at emission. So this is the sum total of all the pollutants. And like stress, this also has complex graph. But you can see that the amortized improvement is there for after intervention. So the blue lines are, on the whole, a lot less than the red lines. So now let's look into more detail about one particular junction. So this blue junction, as you can see here, which is very close to university, actually. So this is one of the most polluted junctions because um, a lot of cars use it and so on. 
So this was the most polluted junction with 24,000 mg of pollutants. And after the intervention in the low traffic scenario, this became the third most polluted. So the traffic has shifted and you can see a very drastic drop in the total sum of pollutants over the simulation. Now in the moderate traffic, you can see more of a smoothening of the curve. We have some pronounced peaks here in the before intervention module, but after the intervention, we can see uh, lesser peaks and also more pronounced ones. Now in the um, high traffic scenario, the most polluted junction became the fourth most polluted after intersection. This is a different intervention here. So after we did the intervention, it has become the fourth most with a very drastic drop of pollution values. Now there is a case to be made of a, such a drastic drop in real life. So maybe we could have a little less of a difference, but the fact is what we want to say is that this works, that this intervention is good because at least in a simulation, it gives us a less, it gives a lot less pollutants and a lot less stress, which can translate into favorable results in real time and in real life. Next, we'll look at the speed camera placement and more specifically the distribution of speed cameras. So this was taken with three cameras in mind and this one has four, but you can see that a lot of these cameras in moderate traffic are on this lane and in low traffic, they're a lot more distributed. So the, now the authorities can try to gauge these values and see that how fast the cars are generally going and based on that, how much the traffic is. And based on that, they can see where to put the speed cameras or speed breakers. And also, even though this might be low traffic or moderate traffic, if you have high speed, it's also dangerous. So you can you can install speed uh, speed breakers or speed cameras or other such preventative measures, which otherwise would not be very feasible to do without such simulations because common intuition and common knowledge says that the highway or the flyover is the fastest part of electronic city. But as you can see with these um, metrics and with these measures, there are also other parts which need special attention. Next, let's move on to Yulu Bike. So Yulu is a company that's headquartered in Bangalore and um, they offer micro mobility solutions like this electric bike or this cycle. And the for a bit of context, you generally rent out these for a particular time and you take them out of a Yulu bike stand and you put it back into another Yulu bike stand. And there are loads of these bike stands dotted around the city, more so in electronic city or micro mobility is the next big thing. So we collected data about these stands and their locations from the IODX portal, which is managed by the Indian Institute of Science and it's called Indian Urban Data Exchange, essentially an open data portal for all things urban data in our country. And we took uh, the Yulu bike data from there. So the blue pins here are the current positions of the Yulu bike racks and the red circles like this one, this one are the stress junctions calculated on uh, high traffic and the green circles are the most polluted junctions. So some of them are coincident. So we have, for example, this one and this one are coincident. But what we want to show is that we could put more of these micro mobility solutions near this junction. So for example, if someone gets off the bus or someone get, is dropped off by their friend, most the first thing that they do is take a cab. However, if we have more Yulu bike racks here, they could be more tempted to take the cleaner, the greener option and something that causes lesser pollution as these are very small vehicles as compared to a car or as compared to an auto rickshaw. So here are the future plans that we have for our project. So we're going to add more scenarios and interventions. Again, our GitHub repository is going to be open forever and we're going to add more things. And here's where you come in. We actively encourage you also to contribute to our effort and we can make this a much better place for everyone because this is a test bed, not just for electronic city, but around the world. These metrics can be used for any network as long as you load it in, uh, load it in with the proper parameters. And these can be configured and customized to whatever that you would like to research. So for example, in the stress junction, you can prioritize one thing over another. In speed cameras, you can prioritize the radius of the bounding box. And in emission, you can prioritize a particular pollutant. Then, that, so that is something that we want to act, actively add to. And then the next thing is more detailed verification with real world data. Like I said, we have IUDX data. We also have, we'll get data from the LCTA, the aforementioned LCTA, and we can verify it with more real world data and improve the simulations like so. The third thing is we would like to change the scheme of the adaptivity of the traffic lights, for example, through reinforcement learning. So we could harness the power of that. And then we could also extend the capabilities of said testbed and demonstrating its use across different networks. So thank you. That's the end of this presentation. We're open to any feedback and any questions.